It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the LG Calibration Studio software. I'm using an LG 27GR95QE, which belongs to the Ultra Gear series, but this software is supported on various other models in the Ultra Gear series, also the Ultra Fine series, possibly some others as well. There's a link to download this in the description of the video. You might have seen there, it told me to make sure that the monitor was connected via USB. So you've got your system connected to the USB-B or the USB-C port, the upstream port of the monitor. That is essential so it can load the profile onto the monitor. So what you're doing with hardware calibration is that you are directly addressing the lookup table of the monitor. So this is different to an ICC profile or software-based profile in that you're basically writing a new preset to your monitor and it works in a similar way to other presets, except that the software is setting a lot of things for you and you'll find that some of your settings will be greyed out. And I'll go through that in a little bit more detail shortly. So various different meters or sensors, colorimeters, spectrophotometers are supported by this software. If you go to the link that's in the video description, there's also a little PDF guide which lists some of the devices that are supported. I'm using an X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus at the moment, but that has now been rebranded as the Calibrite Color Checker Plus. So various X-Rite sensors have been rebranded as Calibrite. They're exactly the same thing, same hardware, and they're supported by this software. So if you see mention of various X-Rite colorimeters or other devices, they've probably been rebranded as Calibrite, but whether you've got an actual X-Rite branded model or a Calibrite branded model, it'll work all the same. I also tested this software with my Datacolor Spider X Elite, and that worked well with this software as well. So the first thing you want to do is select the picture mode, calibration one or calibration two. Some models may have more calibration slots, but this is the preset that you're writing to with your hardware calibration. You can select the color gamut as well. The real settings of interest are the ones at the top for manual upwards. The other ones are basically just listing a few ICC profiles that you might have used recently on your system, and it may be able to glean some information from those profiles and use them as a base for calibration. But the main ones to focus on here are between native and manual. Depending on your monitor model, they may have some others listed, such as Adobe RGB. This monitor doesn't offer particularly high Adobe RGB coverage, which is why they don't list Adobe RGB as an option here, but it does offer excellent sRGB coverage, so that's an option, and it has excellent DCI-P3 coverage, so P3 D65. So when you select the color gamut, there are various sliders here, so you can configure things to your liking, brightness, color temperature, and gamma. The default for P3 D65 is gamma of 2.6, if you select sRGB, the default gamma is 2.2. In either case, you can change this according to your preferences. For the brightness, you can go all the way up to max. So mine shows 200 and then max, but actually on this model, 200 and max are the same thing because this monitor doesn't go particularly bright, but most of their LCDs will go above 200 candles per meter squared or 200 nits. You can adjust the brightness after the calibration. So yes, the calibration will be based on a certain brightness level, but the brightness will be unlocked if you need to make some adjustments after the calibration, or you need to make adjustments for different times of day, etc. If you want to, you can also manually configure the color gamut. So if you go on color gamut manual, you can input various different values here, different coordinates. You could use sRGB as a base or DCI-P3 or Adobe RGB. That's what I'd recommend if you want to just tweak things a little bit. But for most people, they will be sticking to these particular standards. And if you select native, it will use the full gamut of the monitor. So as wide a color gamut as the monitor actually is able to output. Another thing to be aware of, settings, just before we proceed with the calibration. Various different options here, as you can see. I'm not going to go through all of these. You can set schedules if you want. You can have it daily, weekly, two weeks, 30 days, 60 days, 120. Things do drift over time, so I would recommend recalibrating every now and then. There are also some options here, but I would leave things here at the default. ICC version 4 and matrix-based. Table-based will take a lot longer, and there's really no need to do that for a basic hardware calibration of a monitor. Same with the color patches. I would just stick to all of the defaults, and that's what I'm going to do. I've got my colorimeter placed ready because I'm about to do the calibration, and I'm going to write to calibration 1, sRGB color gamut target, I'm going to set my brightness to 120, that's fine. 6500K, 2.2. These are actually all the defaults for sRGB. And then press proceed. 
and it just tells you how to set up the colour imager, which I've already done. And it's all step by step. It guides you through everything. It's just telling me to place the colour imager in the middle of the screen. And you can see on the left side of the screen there, it's showing you what it's actually doing. It's also reminding you that you should have warmed up your monitor for at least 30 minutes, recommended an hour. My monitor has been on for several hours now, so it's nice and warmed up. It also says you can cancel the calibration. If you press escape or alt and F4 or bash other combinations of buttons, it doesn't actually do anything. There's a little progress bar on the bottom and it's just going to show various different display patches on the screen, take various readings. This is very tedious. So I'm not going to show you the entire thing. The process takes around 10 minutes. It could potentially change a bit depending on the device you're using, perhaps the monitor as well. So around 10 minutes later, it's completed the calibration and it now shows you the target versus the current reading and the deviation percentage. So that's pretty close, really. Less than 1% deviation versus the targets. If you're not happy with that for whatever reason, you could redo the calibration. It might get a bit closer. It does show you the gamut, but it doesn't give you a useful visual reference comparing to the actual color space, so sRGB in this case. It's going to adjust my camera exposure so it's a little bit clearer, but it doesn't show that. However, I did cross-check this when I was using my Spider X, I also used the Spider X software and it did provide a tight match to sRGB for the gamut. You can see the exact results in the color reproduction section of the written review of the 27GR95QE and just for reference, I have included a link to that in the description of the video. So you'll notice that I still have the colorimeter sitting there. The calibration has been done. The monitor's running the calibration. That's fine. If you're happy with this, that's okay. You can exit. However, I prefer to do an additional validation step. This doesn't take 10 minutes this time. It only takes a few minutes. It'll be done within a few minutes. This just does a few final checks and it will give you more thorough reporting to show the accuracy of your profile. So it does seem very similar to the initial calibration in terms of the steps and certainly initially. But when it gets onto the main measurement of the patches, it's much quicker. So as I said, you don't have to wait another 10 minutes. So that took around three minutes and it gives you some information here, but I'm just going to save report because this gives you a nicer view of everything. So save report as PDF. So again, there's no comparison with the reference gamut. It just shows you the gamut it has measured when it calibrated the monitor. Gamma curve target versus the monitor and the brightness, color temperature and gamma versus the target. And you might notice as well it says zero for black level. That's because remember I'm using an OLED at the moment, so it does have a zero black level. Depending on the device you're using, it, it might not actually show zero even for an OLED, but that's because some of the devices can't accurately measure very low black depth. So the spider devices tend to over-report this a bit. But if you're calibrating an LCD using the software, you're very unlikely to show zero unless something's gone wrong with the calibration or if you're using some kind of local dimming. So it then gives you the color temperature of various grayscale patches and gives you the accuracy results as well. And then at the end there, very nice to see, average delta E 1.19 with DE94 or 1.33 DE2000, so that's excellent. A little bit more with the white point. That could depend on the model. I found actually when I changed the color channels on this monitor, it did jump about 100k for the white point sometimes, so it was difficult to get it exactly at 6,500. If I redid the calibration, it might get a little bit closer, but I think some models are just better than this that, than others. But really, the target white point depends on your lighting environment, um, and I wouldn't stress too much about this kind of deviation. It's still below delta E of 3 even for the white point, so perceptively it's not something I'd worry about. So I've closed the program now, and I'm just going to show you how the profile looks on the monitor, or how it's laid out on the monitor. So game mode calibration 1, that's the profile I used, that's what I hardware calibrated to, and it shows the brightness is set to 67, which gave 120 nits on this monitor. Remember, it's not a very bright monitor, as I said, the 27GR95QE, which is why it's 67, yet it only gets you 120 nits. Also shows you the color temperature and the gamma. Calibration 2 was another one I did, but with the brightness set to maximum. And if you go on Game Adjust or Picture Adjust, these might be laid out differently depending on your model. You'll find that you can adjust brightness, but you'll probably find that most other things are grayed out. That's because it's all set by the program and if you want to change those things you can calibrate again or you could set up your calibration 2 if you've used calibration 1 for example. And just a very final thing to note, it is important to be aware of this though, it will create an ICC profile and it will also activate this profile. 
So the way the profile works is it shows the date and the time of the profile. So 2023, the fifth month, 27th day, and it was done at 1856 hours and 09 seconds. And then the model number, which is 27GR950, it reports it as. Anyway, you don't need to use this profile because the calibrated information is all on your monitor and you can use that on any application. That's really the point in hardware calibration. So it doesn't need the profile. However, the profile will allow the application, if you're using a color wear application or an ICC wear application, it'll give information to the application so it's aware of, for example, the gamut that's measured by the profile and it can make appropriate adjustments based on that. So where this might make particular sense is if you had selected native or you're using a wide color gamut for your profile, but perhaps you want to do some work in the sRGB color space, rather than having to reprofile with sRGB, although you could do that, the full gamut information is contained in the profile and appropriate gamut mapping can be done by the application. So that's really all of us to the LG Calibration Studio software. Be sure to check out the description of the video for information about supporting our work. And also be aware that liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, a nice way of showing your support.